the need to move money from place to place, the cost of doing so, the overhead, as you put it, makes me think, believe it or not, of Bitcoin, because some people have said, hey, Bitcoin is the answer to those problems. Are you a believer? Well, Bitcoin is exciting because it shows how cheap it can be. Uh, Bitcoin is, is better than currency in that uh, you don't have to ha be physically in the same place. And, of course, for large transactions, currency can, can get pretty inconvenient. The customers we're talking about aren't trying to be anonymous. You know, they're willing to be uh, known. So it, it, the Bitcoin technology is key, and you could add to it or you could build a similar technology uh, where there's enough attribution that people feel comfortable. This has nothing to do with uh, terrorism or uh, any type of, of money laundering. So what does Buffett not like right now? That would be Bitcoin. He says that Bitcoin right now looks, looks a little bit tulip-like to him. It's not a currency. I mean, it, it, you know, it, 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 it does not meet the test of a currency. It, 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 uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not around in 10 or 20 years. Why does it not meet the definition of a currency? Well, because people say, well, I'll sell you goods in bitcoins, but they change the price of those every time the price of the dollar changes in relation to the bitcoin. They're pricing off the dollar. They could say, well, I'll sell it to you in barrels of oil. But if they ch every time the price of oil changes, they change the number of barrels you have to have. That's not, your, your oil is not the currency. The other technology breaks Orwell's dictum. It breaks Orwell's dictum by providing proof of publishing at a certain time. And that is the intellectual underpinning of that whole system and can be used for lots and lots of other things. And so that's the big expansion we're about to see uh, in Bitcoin, all derived from this basic premise that you can prove that a particular statement, a particular consensus, a particular contract happened at a particular time globally uh, and it requires the subversion of every single jurisdiction where people are running Bitcoin to overturn that. Am I right in understanding that you're saying that the Bitcoin architecture has applications far beyond the economic role that Bitcoin can play and that that architecture is very strengthening to the life of information in the digital space, ma making it less vulnerable to the kind of mischief you talked about in Russia or elsewhere. Is that what you're saying? Exactly, exactly. That underlying architecture can be used uh, for publishers, for example, uh, so that, um, as an example, we are starting to use Bitcoin WikiLeaks, uh, stuffing our um, cryptographic keys of stuff that we publish. So we proved that we have published stuff at a particular time uh, by stuffing it in Bitcoin, in the blockchain. And then if someone were to come and try and modify the material that we have published to take out particular parts, that would be detectable. Do you think Bitcoin will be disruptive in that way? I mean, we nail um, it to speculative currency. Will it be something that will be what normal consumers will use and will disrupt the banking industry? My opinion of Bitcoin is that, uh, I, I mean, I think Bitcoin is probably a good thing, um, but it's, it's essentially, uh, it, it, its main thing, thing will be, I mean, this probably would get quoted here and there, but the, it, it, it's, it, it's, I think it's primarily going to be a means of, of doing illegal transactions. <laughs> um, but that's not necessarily entirely bad because, <laughs> you, know, you know, some things should be, maybe shouldn't be illegal. Uh, so, um, but the combination of Silk Road and Bitcoin will save us. Well, it, it will be useful for legal and illegal transactions. Otherwise, it would have no value as a use of for for legal transactions because you have to have a legal to illegal bridge. Yeah. Uh, I don't own any Bitcoin. Yeah. Right. Of, in fact, uh, one can pay for a tour on Virgin Galactic up to the moon with Bitcoin. I think the, the Winklevoss twins have said that they would do exactly that. Do you think this is a currency, a currency that's really going to work eventually? Well, I think it is working. Um, and uh, there will be other currencies like it that may, may be even better. Um, but in the meantime, um, there's a big industry around Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, people have made fortunes out of Bitcoin. Some people have lost money out of Bitcoin. Um, it's volatile. Hmm? It's volatile. 
Yeah, but it is quite volatile. But, um, but you know, when in volati volatility, people can make money out of volatile situations. Why was it important for you to give it sort of that stamp of approval, that endorsement, by saying to the Winklevoss twins, yes, you can pay for the, uh, the ride with Bitcoin? Because I'm not foolish. I mean, if, if people have got lots of Bitcoins and they want to go to space, um, I'd much rather they um, spent that money on our spaceship. Uh, whether I keep the Bitcoins is another matter. But I'd much rather they, they spent that money on, on a Virgin Galactic spaceship than on, uh, you know, Elon will be sending people to space one day on Elon's spaceship. So we'll, we'll grab the money while it's, while it's there. <laughs> Elon versus... I, I want to distinguish uh, Bitcoin f from... Uh, the technology such as um, blockchain and those kinds of because when we talk about Bitcoin one might be referring to either of those things and I just want to create the distinction between those things so, well why don't why don't you I think why don't you talk about both? Well, a cur uh, uh, okay um, a currency cryptocurrency there are two th purposes of a currency, a medium of exchange and a storehold of wealth. I can have a bond or so on. Um, and then there's the question of which one. Is it Bitcoin, Ethereum? Is it going to be another technology question? Okay, so all of those things are on the table. Right now, it's, um, it's not an effective medium of exchange. You, you know, you, I get bit some Bitcoin, I want to go spend it Bitcoin. You can't use it as an effective medium of exchange, other than in a very limited number of cases, which can also be threatened in terms of what the secrecy of those transactions are and things that are being done by governments to uh, get beyond that secrecy. So it's not an effective uh, medium of exchange as of now, and it's not an effective uh, storehold of wealth. And that's because the speculation on it is such, and the participant in it, um, is um, something that I would say is a classic bubble kind of situation. I mean, if you look at the nature of the participant in it, and you say, what is the level of sophistication in their understanding the ability? Is, do we have a sophisticated investor who is then actually thinking in terms of expected value, terms of what, where that's going to be and so on? Or do we have an investor who is inclined to then flip it and trading in and out? And what's that component? You can, by the way, have a wonderful investment that's a long-term investment and still have a bubble in that investment. So, so I'm not saying this is a forever thing, but the nature of the participants in that investment and what they're doing has made it a bubble of, you know, what I, uh, doesn't mean it's a worthless investment. It just means that when you look at the characteristics of what constitutes a bubble, the purchase for resale by a naive group of people who are attracted because it's moving up, it has those bubble characteristics. Okay, and then um, and then so um, and then there's the question of what is the version of it. So if I take Bitcoin and then there's Ethereum and then there's the I don't know each one of those that might come and how will they operate? I would say that as distinct from the blockchain notion of the and the whole concept of cryptocurrency which has a lot of merit to it so um, but as a currency you can't have the volatility driven by speculation on it make it a storehold of wealth so it that's that's an its characteristics right now are standing in the way of its potential. It may be engineered differently to some extent there you know maybe if you created um, at a different engineer. If I was trying to make it effective as a currency, I would engineer how I do that differently. I won't digress into how I would engineer it to do it differently. So I think it has a lot of potential as, um, as, a, as a concept and uh, blockchain, but at the same time, it has these issues I'm referring to. Tell me, what about crypto? Does that ever become a, a, an actual means of transacting? Yeah. It, it does still. Uh, it was and I said crypto. Am I allowed to say crypto? I hope yeah, no, I get allowed, allowed to, to say, say crypto. crypto. Can I bring it up? I would really like Bloomberg to take this article that, that I wrote for them in two, 2013 out of their paywall. But basically, you know, my view at the time, which I've held since today, I haven't changed, is that everybody should probably have 1% of their assets in Bitcoin and, specifically. Or crypto. Yeah, crypto. Um, I still believe that today. And I think it is just a fantastic hedge. So if you go back to the conversation this morning, when you see the amount of leverage the financial industry is running and you think about all these dislocations and all these exogenous things that are happening that you can't predict, 
there's a lot of risk to the downside. And it would be great that an, an average individual citizen of any country in the world has an uncorrelated hedge. And I've said this repeatedly ad nauseum mm -hmm. on this show. Every financial instrument is correlated. But Buffett, it's all not, fake, but, except Bitcoin, but Jamal, which is fundamentally an uncorrelated, uncorrelated hedge that, that Warren Buffett says has zero value, zero inherent I, value, I, I, unless I, someone pays more I for it. I think he's an exceptional uh, person. I've learned an enormous amount, both from afar right. and the few interactions I've had with him. He is completely wrong shouldn't and outdated price, on this. Shouldn't the price have gone up during this coronavirus during safe situation? Haven. Um, it went down. Like gold. If it was really digital gold. I, I think that you have to look more at volumes. Uh, these oh, are not happening. necessarily event-driven strategies, meaning you don't, you don't you want to... You just called it digital gold. No, he I didn't. didn't say that. No, he didn't. I, I that, didn't that's didn't the, that. that's, the, that's, the, that's what, what people, people say. say. I don't think you buy... I don't think when you, know, you wake up and you see a coronavirus scare in the Dow down to 2,000, you should not be going in and buying Bitcoin. That is an idiotic strategy. I think a reasonable strategy is to say... 1% of my net worth right. should be in something that is completely uncorrelated to the world and how the world works. You quietly and quick, you know, over some number of time, accumulate a position and then you just never look at it again and hope that that insurance under the mattress never has to come due. Right. But if it does, it will protect you because then that thing will be hundreds of thousands or million dollars a coin.